Hey internet friends, welcome to the top 10 apps for music production. Whether you have an iPhone or an iPad, whether you're doing it all on the iPad or whether you're using the iPad to say supplement a computer DAW setup, I tried them all and these are the top 10. Well, they're actually the top 14 as I clearly can't count. It gets tricky after eight. So the top 14 apps for music production on iOS devices. Oh, and before we get started, I did a course about this on Groove 3. There'll be a link below, of course, all about how to make music using iOS devices. Again, either purely on an iPad or using the iPad to supplement the computer setup. Link below for that. It's well, it's excellent. It's very good and covers all of this in much more detail, including hardware, whether analog or MIDI keyboards and such. But anyway, app number one, Audio Bus. You can route audio in and route audio out. You can route MIDI in and MIDI out. You can run things in parallel and apply MIDI effects to things. For example, you can use these MIDI flow effects to manipulate the MIDI, just like a MIDI effect in your DAW. Creating key zones of splitter or using scales to map notes into a particular key that you can choose. You can also use it to apply effects, so such as the FabFilter plugins. More about them soon. And there's a mixer. Audio Bus 3, it's the main way to route audio and MIDI. Rhyme. Next, we have Sound Prism Pro. The Pro's important. I hold it like this with my thumbs, doing thumb stuff, maybe do a bit of that action. Left hand on a bit, right hand on a bit. Using one finger on the left, one finger on the right, we play bass with the left hand and the chords on the right. All perfectly in key, which we can choose. And you can make the chords bigger if you want. And with the Pro version, you can root the MIDI out, either into a different app on the iPad, or say, into a computer, into say, Serum or Diva, or a plugin in a DAW. Do you need to hardwire, or can you do it wirelessly? And what are the pros and the cons? I show you all of that in the course. App number three, Aurea, Aurea, Aurea Pro. I think I'm saying it correctly. Aurea Pro. It's a DAW. It's the closest thing to full DAW. I mean, look at all these options here. There's an awful lot you can do. Now it's not as powerful as say Ableton on a computer, but on an iPad, it's as good as it gets, and it's very good at what it does. And for lots of people, I'm sure it's all you need. Aurea Pro, the closest thing to a full DAW on the iPad. App number four, noise. I said that word funny, noise from Rolly. And in fact, somewhat counterintuitively, one of my favorite bits about noise isn't using the app. One of my favorite bits is to use it as an instrument, an AU plugin instrument, effectively. Just like you have plugins on a computer, you can get plugin instruments on the iPad. And noise is I'd say overall my favorite. The sounds are outrageously good across every genre, every type of sound, from the normal to the strange, but interesting, I like strange sounds. The app itself though is incredible too. Granted, I haven't spent as long playing with the app, but the half an hour I did spend playing with the app. Very, very good, very, very good. Rolly might be the most exciting company in music. It's definitely in the top three, alongside people like Splice. For different reasons, but Splice, Rolly, I'll leave the rest up to you. It's incredible what they're doing, things you just can't do in any other way and that no one else is doing, such as this MPE thing. Just like the Rolly keyboard, the C board, I think it's called. They make the most expressive instruments, and it's, oh, and that's almost the whole point for lots of people, including me most of the time, expressing a vibe or a feeling, an emotion, and this may be the best way to do it. And it's free, and some of the packs aren't free, but the app itself is free. App number five, maybe my favorite overall, it depends what mood I'm in. Lima, the best way to create a custom interface. For example, I designed this in the editor, the Lima editor, and I'm using it to control Ableton with these physics effects. Super expressive and again, allowing you to do things you just can't do in any other way. It's a cheaper option called TouchOSC. 
but it's not as good. But just a simple fader, so mapping a fader on your iPad, a fader in Ableton, or maybe some DJ software. I mean, I suppose it is technically fractionally simpler and fractionally cheaper, but Lima's better and it's, I mean, it's not even that expensive in the grand scheme of things and it's a much better ecosystem. And you can go deep with this thing, really deep. I mean, scripting apps, almost. It's crazy stuff and you can spend years, months, years even digging into the details. It's one of the more exciting parts of music to me, actually. It's definitely something I'm exploring. It's, I really like it. Lots of potential here. In fact, I'm going to do a full video on it in the future. App number six, MIDI mugs. This allows you to send MIDI via USB. Also, can you sound cards and MIDI cables? A sound card like this or a MIDI cable like this? MIDI mugs allows you to plug the iPad directly into the computer via USB and send the MIDI directly into, say, Ableton or some DJ software or whatever it is you're doing. Making it the simplest way to send MIDI is it's just a USB cable. iPad to computer, USB. Magic. App number seven, in the same spirit of useful utility things, MIDI Link Sync. The clue's in the name, but uh, I suppose that assumes you know what link means in this case. In this case, link's referring to Ableton Link. The best way to keep everything in sync, even if you don't have Ableton. Even if you just have an iPad, no Ableton, no computer, if you want apps to stay in sync, use Ableton Link. It should be their, their slogan, Ableton. Ableton, make that your slogan. Make a little theme tune to keep apps in sync. Use Ableton Link. I'll invoice you for that. But what about hardware like this, an analog synth? How do we keep that in sync? What about apps without Ableton Link? Then what do we do? In that situation, we use MIDI Link Sync. Sync in a MIDI source to Ableton Link in either direction, either a MIDI source to Link or Link to a MIDI source, which we connect up by cables and sound cards and stuff. Again, more about this in the course. Once again, link below for that. It's excellent. App number eight more of a collection of apps in a non-traditional sense. The FabFilter plugins. Now, many of you, especially if you follow my channel, many of you will know about FabFilter. In the computer world, FabFilter make the best plugins, the best effects, the best EQ, Pro-Q3, the best compressor, Pro-C2, the best reverb, Pro-R, and so on. I could spend hours rabbiting on about how I personally think they're the best devices all things considered. In fact, even if you just consider a small percentage of the things, they still make the best plugins. They're almost, overall especially, a good, in my opinion, a good step ahead of everybody else. And you can get them on the iPad. And that makes me very happy. Oh, and you just, with these, you don't need anything else. You've got your gate, a DS, or a limiter, a multiband compressor, an EQ, a reverb. And you honestly don't need anything else. And they're the full versions as well. They're not some stripped down iPad specific version. They're the full version of the apps. Ooh, this makes for a very happy multiplier. It's a tough one to follow. It's a tough one to follow. So let's go in a totally different direction. So at least the next app has a chance. Suggester. Suggester is excellent. And as the name suggests, it suggests things. Chords, as you can see. Choose a scale, say G major and then just tap away, seeing what chords you like. Pick ones you like, drag them out, and then import them into a song. It's alongside Captain Chords, my favorite way to write chord progressions. It allows me to focus on the emotion and the feeling and the songwriting, not music theory. I mean, yes, given enough time, I can learn where my fingers should go and try to memorize how to play some of these chords, but that's just procedural stuff, that's not creative. The creativity is in your chord choice and when the chord changes and the rhythm and the timing and which chords you choose and their relationships, not the specific way the chords are structured. So why well, learn how the chords are structured? Just tap away like a bird pecking, peck, 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 peck. Ooh, that sounds good. Let's turn that into a song. App number 10, remember, you're going to 14. So app number 10, a synth. Photo 4. You can press a note and flick it about. It's weird and different and interesting. It's a, I think it's based off animal flock behavior. So all these dots are birds and they group together and move apart and you can flick it and they go like it's I 
think of unison in a synth, each bird hears a different voice. And they can let me show you the options. Speed, turbulence, attract, align, repel. Which is cool. But then it's even cooler the fact you can tap it and make them move a bit so you can interact with the unison. Oh. I like that. Even even if I couldn't poke the birds, I'd still find it excellent, but I can poke it. Make a change. Interesting, fun, and unique. I'm a big fan of things you just can't do in any other way. And this is one of them. Another is app number 11, another synth. Annie Moog. I'm actually saying that wrong, but it's if I say Annie Moog, then it's easier to Google it if you want to Google. Annie Moog. I think it's actually Annie Moog. Maybe, because actually, am I even saying that right? Because of Moog? Moog. Moo goes with the cow. Be serious multiplier. It's pronounced Moog, I think. I'll be rather embarrassed if it's. I'll put something on screen. Is it pronounced Moog? Just found out on screen. So therefore, this might be called Annie Moog, but I'm going to call it Annie Moog because it's simpler. But why is this so cool? Now, there are some presets, not that many presets, and the presets are quite average, in my opinion. But what's interesting is the way this makes sound. You choose some timbres. Some sounds. I mean, I said timbres, but it looks like timbers. Timbers. That's pronounced timbres. It's pronounced timbre, actually. Some people say timbre. I say timbre. Timbre. Sounds. So you choose some sounds, and then there's X Y pad section. You move through them. You can set the orbit and the path and the way it moves. Look at them go, moving between the various timbres, the various sounds, in a whole range of different ways. Fast, or slow, or on this crazy path. An adventure, an adventure through sounds. It's interesting and unique. It's a whole new, different way of synthesizing sound. <laughs> moving about through various sounds. Marvellous. App number 12, Music Memos. The simplest way to record audio. Whilst you could record into a DAW, it's a bit fiddly. Well, it's not that fiddly, but it's there's lots of buttons to click and things to check and arming to do and recording and then exporting and it's a bunch of faff, lots of faff. The simplest way to record audio is Music Memos. And stop. As easy as that. It's recorded it. Band simple's good. There's a time and a place for complex, and there's a time and a place for simple. When need simple, go music memos. App number 13. Where's it gone? Oh, I've lost it. Oh no. I've put, oh, there it is. It's a that's what I get in a muddle about this. So the app's called Arpeggio Gnome, but it's called Arp Pro on the app name. Probably because Arpeggio Gnome is quite a long word, and it's technically called Arpeggio Gnome Pro. Anyway, it's the best way to make arpeggios. And not just Simple arpeggios, but weird, advanced, complex arpeggios, almost like melodies. You can choose a scale, choose, I mean, there's lots of options here, all quite self explanatory, but importantly, though, they're interesting, almost melodic in their complexity. You can change the speed by going higher. You can actually play this as an instrument with your thumbs pressing different positions, different speeds, and where on the keyboard you want to go. And then there's pitch, bend, and volume. And it's expressive, it's a performance device. Again, just like other apps, you can route the MIDI into other apps or into a computer. And finally, let's get weird ZX Plectrum. And that's 
All it does, the screen goes mad and the noises are crazy. I used to use this in DJ sets, plugging it in via the mixer. Sometimes they're in effect like reverb and then holding it in the air. I've turned the sound off so it doesn't annoy you now. It's like, and you can sort of, the, the flashy light makes it exciting for the crowd. Ooh, it's lots of fun. Lots of fun, great for build-ups as you can imagine. Simple, but effective, it does one thing and that one thing well. And as I say, for more information about all of this, do see my course on Groove 3. There'll be a link below, but if not, type Groove 3 into the Googles and I'm sure you can find it. My name's Multiplier. Catch on the flippy flip.